In this clip, we're going to begin animating our robot character. So in the last clip, we went over the very basics of adding keyframes inside of Maya. Now we're actually going to begin using those keyframes to create a basic animation. So what we're going to first create for our robot character is we're going to animate this sort of power core at the back of our character. And what we want to happen is we want to have this power core kind of just move inside of our character here. So if we select this control curve, you can see in our channel box, we have this channel called open close. And this is going to basically drive the opening and closing of this power core. So if we select that channel, and we can either type in a value here if we wanted to, maybe a value of zero, you'll see that if we do that, it's going to move that power core all the way inside of our robot, and a value of five is going to bring it all the way out to the max value. Now, if we want to go ahead and sort of scrub this value, what we can go ahead and do is select that channel, hold the middle mouse button, and just click and drag in our viewport, and that's going to allow us to adjust that value an incremental amount by simply sliding it back and forth. You can see in the channel box it changing over here as we're slowly just dialing this back in and out. So a value of zero, it's going to be all the way in. A value of five, it's going to be all the way out. So let's begin creating this animation. So we want to make sure that we're on frame one in our timeline here. So we want this animation to begin at frame one. So we're going to use our keyboard shortcut of S to lock in a keyframe on this channel, this open and close channel. So let's go ahead and hit S. All right, and that has added that keyframe. You can see we have this red box indicating that there is a keyframe set on this value. And basically, you've just told Maya that at frame one, we want a value of five to be locked in for this channel. So now if we want to have this this power core to begin to move inside our character, we now need to move forward in time in our time slider. So let's go to go ahead and go to around frame 11 or so. So basically we've just moved to frame 11. Now we want to tell Maya where we want this value to be, this open and close value to be at frame 11. So let's go ahead and we'll select this channel again. And we'll just bring begin to bring this in. And we might bring it in to maybe a value of maybe around 1 or 2, maybe around 1.8 or so, or 1.9 should work just fine. So just anywhere around that value of this open and close. You can see at frame 11, our power core is not completely inside of our character just yet. Now that we've moved this value to 1.8, let's go ahead and press the S key. So we've locked a keyframe down on frame 11. And what we can do is go ahead and just click and drag in our time slider here to begin to scrub our animation. And now you can see we've just created our very first animation inside of Maya. Now it's nothing really amazing or spectacular, but you can begin to see sort of the power of your keyframes inside of Maya. We've simply just added two keyframes in here, and all we're doing with the keyframes is just locking in at a specific frame that value for our channel. So at frame one, again, we've said we want the value to be five. At frame 11, we want the value to be 1.8. And what we can actually go ahead and do is jump to frame one here, and let's just play this. And you can start to get a sense of the overall speed of this movement. You can see it quickly begins to move inside of our character. Now, the reason I didn't want to just set this directly to a value of zero and have this completely closed at frame 11. Now, even though we're only learning about sort of the basic ways of creating animation inside of Maya, I still want to add in just a little bit more sort of believability or just a little bit more appeal to this animation. Now what we're going to have this do is we're going to have it quickly get to this position at frame 11 so you can see our power core quickly jumps to here and then once it gets to here we're going to have it sort of slowly continue that movement all the way inside of our character to get a sort of a little bit more appeal to this animation. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to maybe around frame 32 or so. So we're going to go quite a few frames ahead here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this in to maybe around a value of 0.5 or 0.6 or so. You can see it here in the open and close value. Now what we can do is we can press S to lock a keyframe down. We also have the option to turn on the auto key function and this is really really important when creating animations inside of Maya. So what this is going to do is anytime we change a value on a channel that has a keyframe on it, Maya is automatically going to set a keyframe for you. So in order to enable this, we want to select this little icon right here. This is the auto keyframe toggle. With it selected, we now have turned the auto keyframe function on. Now currently we don't have a keyframe set at frame 32 because we just now turned that on. So what we'll do is we'll sort of just update this. So let's go back to frame 32. Let's take this open and close value. Again, we have auto key turned on. So at frame 32, we're going to change this value to, again, maybe around 0.5 or so. 0.5 or 6 should work just fine. And as soon as we let go, you can see that Maya has automatically added a keyframe for us at frame 32 for this value, simply because we altered the value of this channel from what it was previously on the previous keyframe. So at frame 11, the value is at 1.8. We moved forward in time to frame 32. We set that value to 0.5. And since Maya saw that that value changed on a different keyframe or a different frame, it automatically dropped a keyframe for us. So it's really helpful for speeding up your workflow. Now finally, what we're going to do is we're going to jump to frame 35. And actually, let's go just maybe to frame 34. So that should work just for us, just fine for us. And let's change this open and close value all the way to zero. And we have that completely shut. So now if we play this animation, you can see we're getting a really nice movement to this closing function. The reason we wanted to add in sort of that very fast movement and then it slowly closes, it gives us a lot more appeal to this animation. Now if we just had it simply go from frame maybe 1 to frame 32 and have it completely close, we're, what we're going to get is just a very linear, constant kind of movement, kind of sort of just a boring movement. So we're sort of just learning about sort of the very basic animation fundamentals of thinking about your spacing and how you want this object to actually move in space. You want to try to avoid constant linear movement. It really creates that sort of robotic feel to your animation. Now even though this is a robot character, we want to still avoid that feel to it. So what this gives us is a really nice sort of closing feel to that power core as it sort of enters in all the way inside of our character's back there. So you can see it quickly moves and then it kind of goes the rest of the way there, a little bit slower, and then it finally kind of just pops in those last two frames. So that gives us a really nice appealing movement to our animation. So now that we've created that power core animation, we're going to begin to animate these missile turrets on our character's shoulder in the next clip.